can too, but it wasn't generally talked about. It's talked about now, but there's a lot more of it. And some people would think, well, uh, maybe uh, maybe it has to do with the way we go to war. Um, you would think maybe it would have been a lot easier to adjust if you were knowing that you were fighting Hitler. And, uh, you know, this was a really, really important war to win. But now I think this compounds the uh, stress disorder is when deep down in their heart, I think a lot of them realize that this was all, you know, just wasted time and wasted life and wasted money. And, uh, it, uh, and, and if they can't face that, then I think they harbor those uh, deep feelings and, and that contributes to it. And then all of a sudden the doctor says, well, give him a pill, you know. And well, that's right. And, make him feel better. and again, you're a medical doctor and a veteran yourself, so you can speak directly to this. But that was well known after World War II that if someone thought a war was just, you didn't have as many mental problems. But right. if you don't think it's just, you have serious problems. And it was the Nazis that pioneered drugging their troops with amphetamines and uh, proto-psychotropics. So our military is following uh, what the Nazis did. Yeah. But, you know, whether the war is just or not, what if you uh, are thinking about maybe this is unjust and then you suppress those feelings, you don't express them. It's suppression of some of these horrible thoughts. I cannot believe our government would be, you know, do this. You mean that this was all uh, wasted life? This was all done in vain? That is pretty hard to face up. What if you lost a loved one? Isn't it very natural for you want to make them a hero and say, well, he, he didn't die in vain. His life wasn't wasted. He, you know, he died as a great uh, protector of the Constitution. And, you know, and so you have to suppress those feelings. And I think that is where the, 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 uh, the whole problem is compounded. And then they, then they go to the doctor for a pill, uh, and that makes the whole problem that much worse. That's right. Uh, former Congressman Ron Paul is our guest right now. They're on screen. RonPaulChannel.com. Excellent news, media, and liberty-based analysis with a truth bias. If they like to tell the truth, it's, it's the opposite of the dinosaur media. Briefly, dinosaur media's numbers are dropping about 24% a year, uh, according to Nielsen. At this rate, uh, MSNBC, CNN will have less than 100,000 viewers within two years. Uh, one of our affiliates... Uh, has ratings of over 100,000 uh, listeners in three hours, uh, Congressman. What do you predict is going to happen when when my show has 3 million and the Ron Paul channel has millions and Drudge Report has 10 million a day and all this? What are they going to do? We're already the real media. What is the system going to do uh, to counter this? Well, you, they make efforts, you know, they uh, try to think that they're competing by having a website and, you know, they can go watch videos and this sort of thing. But the the business is going to change, you know. Um, I think the radio business will change uh, and they're going to go more to independent radios and webcasting and all these other things and podcasting. Uh, Market-based. Well, hopefully they're all put out of business. Yes. But, but, but the, the, the tragedy will be is, uh, you know, in a totalitarian country, and we have a little bit of this here where the government has to subsidize the media, so you might see it might get much worse, even though it's bad already, uh, even though it will not give us news and the people won't want it, but they'll rec the people will recognize it, but who knows, it might mean that uh, the taxpayer is going to be forced to pay for some of that stuff, because I think the advertisers who still can make a market choice won't do it. They're going to go to uh, the different sites to uh, advertise and target their advertisement. That's why this is so attracted to so many of the people who are trying to sell products uh, on the air. I agree with you, though. They're going to pure state-run financed media uh, to counter us in trying to censor the new media, trying to censor web freedom. But thank God you're there. I know that's one of the main initiatives you've got, uh, Dr. Paul, is to keep the Internet free. Absolutely. And it's constantly being threatened. Uh, and um, I'm all, since I don't know all the technology involved in, in uh, how the Internet works. I'm betting on uh, the free market and free individuals and the, the fact that this is universal to come up and counteract everything that the government does, you know, get around it. So uh, 
I'm I'm hoping technology uh, is the vehicle that undermines the authoritarianism that exists in some of our right. governments, and that's what I'm hoping for. That's right. We can compete and innovate our way out of the tyranny. That's our greatest renaissance hope. All right, in the four or five minutes we've got left, sir, I want to get into what you've really been focusing on so eloquently. We've got a professor coming on later who backs you up. Uh, this issue of what's unfolding uh, over in the Ukraine and the demonization by state-run media of anyone that doesn't want to have the EU and NATO take over Ukraine. I mean, they've taken over 90% of the country. They overthrew the government. This is a big defeat for Russia. As you said, Putin's no angel, but, I mean, the media over here is acting like Russia is starting World War III. Instead, the West is starting a new Cold War. Uh, do you agree with that? Absolutely. That's what they're doing. And there's, I go back and forth from, you know, the American people are buying into it again. They're listening to all the TV and going along with it. But then I go and I look for a glimmer of hope and we find out that occasionally they'll do a poll and that poll will show the American people are still coming toward our position and saying, no, we don't need another war. We don't need to, you know, be involved. We don't need troops on the ground. But I don't think the average person on the street yet realizes how much money we put into messing around with the internal affairs of Ukraine for the last 10 years plus, uh, you know, with all the uh, National Endowment for Democracies, uh, even uh, uh, Victoria Nuland admitted they, that the, uh, the Department of State has spent over $5 billion Incredible. interfering, you know, with the government. So, uh, yes, there are problems around, and uh, like you said, uh, we, we can't defend Russia as being the angels. But uh, if, uh, if, we, if we just stayed out of it, it would be a big help. There was no help at all whatsoever for us to be involved there. The evidence is so clear. Look, whether it's uh, Libya or Egypt or Afghanistan or Iraq, Syria, we're over in Syria giving money and helping and aiding this, the uh, al-Qaeda. So, uh, but I think the American people are waking up. They might not see it quite like I do about minding our own business and have non-interventions like our founders wanted, but the, the conservatives are saying, you know what, well, we are broke. You know, there has to be a limit. Have you noticed that already, that some people are saying, well, that, that we, we better wake up because, uh, you know, the, the bank is empty. And that's all right. They're doing is, all they're doing is printing money, so we have to quit. Well, that's the issue is that the socialist and people want us bankrupt. They want us dependent. Uh, they want to wreck the, the golden goose so they can control everything. Uh, two final questions for Ron Paul of ronpaulchannel.com. Dr. Paul, uh, Looking at the presidential run, hands down, your son's the best candidate. He's leading in all the polls. Uh, Ted Cruz is also, I think, a great guy, but I don't completely overall trust him because I haven't known him like I've known your son for 16 years since he was campaigning for you to get back into Congress for 17 years. I do trust Rand. He's done a great job. How, uh, how do we get behind Rand? He's clearly going to run for president now. He started the exploratory group. Uh, he's the front runner. What are you planning to do to support him for president? Well, mainly, uh, you know, trying to get people to understand the issues because a person like Rand or myself or anybody that agrees with us, the problem is that the general population thinks it's not in their best interest if you don't want to promote war and welfare. Well, they want welfare. What we have to do is educate people uh, to the point where we're realizing it's in their interest. Most people vote in their own self-interest, and as long as they think they're going to get something. You know, the, the, uh, the big bankers know exactly what they're doing. It's in their own interest. But we have to get people to understand it's their, in their best interest to vote for somebody like Rand, uh, and even if they want to, even if they will be charged with saying, oh, they don't care about the poor people. You've heard that enough. They think that we, we have no concern. But the whole thing is, if anybody had any compassion or any concern for the poor, uh, they ought to believe in liberty because the evidence is so clear that the freer a country it is, the more prosperity and uh, the, the greater chance that we have for peace. But uh, it's mainly getting that out, mobilizing people, energizing people, getting supporters, sending money. All these things are necessary for a campaign to be successful. What about a Rand Paul, uh, Ted Cruz ticket? Do you think Ted Cruz would run as VP? Oh, I have no idea. I imagine uh, not too many people turn it down. <laughs> well, I like Ted Cruz. Uh, what's your view of him? Well, 
I, I, I have a hesitation about his foreign policy. I do too, yeah. I'm a little less interventionist than, than he is on, on foreign policy. But, you know, he uh, he's tough, and uh, he certainly agrees with us on, on uh, the medical care system in this country and how bad it is and what we ought to do. So. Speaking of that, lastly... Obamacare. He says we can't repeal it. Eighty uh, percent in many polls are against it. Uh, but the Republican leadership, you know, helped write it as, as you exposed. What would you do, sir, to, to dismantle this? Everything you said about it has now come true. Your analysis was absolutely on target. It's worse than we even thought in many cases. It's bankrupting the country, raising payroll taxes on poor people. Uh, sh uh, you know, the, the architect of it, Ezekiel Emanuel, admits it's meant to wreck the system. I mean, isn't that criminal? Absolutely. And if you could, um, you know, if, if you had a Congress to pass a law to repeal it, you could. Uh, the odds of that happening are very slim. But there has to be a way that you can legalize freedom of choice to get out of an evil program, you know. And we sort of had that going, but now with Obamacare, it's been so de-emphasized. De and that is the right of you and I to get out and take care of ourselves and get a tax deduction and have a medical savings account. Uh, people were just flocked to that once they realized, uh, you know, uh, the, that these lies about Obamacare, you know, are lies and that people aren't going to be very happy with it. So we always have to have the right to opt out. We always uh, should have, uh, you know, just in, in schooling. You have to have a right to get out of the government schools. You have to be able to go to a private school or do homeschooling. And when they eliminate that, then we're in big trouble. And in medicine, they're essentially trying to do that for you, to, for any of us to opt out of the system. And right now, there's a lot of unhappy people because it's based on pure authoritarianism. Wow. Well, uh, former Congressman Ron Paul, Ron Paul Channel com. Thank you so much for your tireless defense of liberty, and uh, we look forward to speaking to you again in the future. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Bye. sir. All right, there he goes. Uh, just incredible the way he analyzes everything. In fact, he crystallized it. Obamacare is an evil program. It's an evil system. We should have a right to not be part of it. This is a basic civil God-given right. The way he described Ted Cruz as tough. Ted Cruz is tough. 28 hours not going to the bathroom. Staying eloquent. I've tried to do a 24-hour broadcast. I can hardly do it. I mean, he's tough. And uh, you've got his wife's background on the Council on Foreign Relations and Goldman Sachs. It is not good. But I follow the record of Judge a Tree by its fruits. The fruits are about 95% good with him. They're about 97% good with Rand Paul. They're not going to get elected unless they play some politics. Um my gut tells me that Ted Cruz deep down does love liberty and understands the way the wind blows, too, that liberty is the only thing that's going to save this country. A lot of the establishment doesn't want to totally wreck the country. just They just want power. And I think Ted Cruz kind of represents that, the non-insane establishment. Because the establishment's figuring out when real tyranny comes in, there's not going to be a bunch of seats at the table. Whoever gets the ring of power in this new tyranny, this technocracy, is going to shut down all their competition. Everyone, the common folks, working class, uh, middle class, wealthy, nouveau riche, ultra rich, the, uh, everyone. You really don't want tyranny. It stinks. It's bad. There's a small group of evil people who literally hate families, literally hate God, literally hate justice. I've studied it. In all my 20 years of work, 19 years on air, no one ran Paul actually 18 since like 1996. In all of it, it just comes down to these people want the power to persecute good people. They want the power to control the media and tell an actress, you got to have sex with me if you want to be in state-run media. They want the power to have the street signs the color they want. They want the power to tell you how, what your house can look like or what drugs your kids have got to take. They want to run your life. I don't want to run people's life. I don't want to tell my crew what to do. I want to lead them by example and show them how to defeat tyranny. I do not want to sit there henpecking them, standing over them, telling them what to do all day. Well, the establishment wants that. And you talk to somebody like Ron Paul, I mean, he's the real deal, folks. And that's why socialists and tyrants and control freaks everywhere don't like him. Because collectivism destroys people. Collectivism makes people dependent. Collectivism makes people weak. Victor Hugo, the French philosopher, said it best. Adversity makes men, prosperity makes monsters. Adversity makes men, prosperity makes monsters. 
And that's the paradox. Liberty produces prosperity. And then you get tyranny because people become decadent again. How do you become a virtuous society that doesn't go back through that cycle like Groundhog Day over and over again? I don't want a civil war. I'm not stupid and macho wanting some war with the government. Because I know the people in the government are brainwashed, compartmentalized. I want to free them. I want them to join me.